hello can you see this is our class for unit four or level let's share the booklet okay for some vocabulary nothing difficult to be explained about vocab okay so here there are the language notes of course synonyms antonyms and language some language notes like uh, prefixes and suffixes prefixes and suffixes uh, important lesson uh, you have to study well we have many types of prefixes like here we have the word uh, misunderstand misbehave so here the prefix is the three letters mis so this is miss miss here means something wrong something not correct so misunderstand misbehave anything is the, the meaning here is something wrong okay this is miss uh, re which re of course means to repeat like re read redo reuse rewrite so here means to repeat un of course you know un long time ago when we say unhappy uh, uh, so like unpopular unusual so on here gives uh, the opposite meaning so usual is the opposite and unusual popular is the opposite is uh, unpopular and so on also we have the prefix this gis so the same idea to give the opposite meaning for words like advantage so it will be disadvantage advantage is advantage meaning good points disadvantages bad points disabled okay so we have the word able so if you can do something you are able to do it so if you are disabled disabled means to have a handicap or so you can't do the meaning here this is a, a negative meaning you can do disabled disadvantage disagree next prefix is ill 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 opposite meaning as well. So legal, the opposite of legal, illegal. Uh, use to use something. If you use it in a bad way, so ill use. Impossible. Impolite, impatient. The prefix here is im. Im uh, uh, for possible. The opposite meaning is impossible. Again, the opposite meaning. Polite, impolite, patient and impatient. So we have miss, ray on this ill and im prefixes with different meaning okay what about suffixes suffixes here like the suffix er when you take talk about the door use user read reader care carer so the suffix er this is the person less less gives the opposite meaning like care careless like hope, hopeless. So careless without care, hopeless without hope, and so on. Uh, here we have the suffix meant. Meant change the verb from the verb into a noun. All the words that end with uh, meant, M-E-N-T, these are, all of them are nouns. So this, this change uh, the word into a noun. Employee will be employment. And examples here. So this is synonyms. Uh, this is the related to suffix and prefix. Here we have some language notes reporting verbs with infinitive clause. Okay, so we use the verb plus indirect object plus two plus infinitive. This is the structure. Some reporting verbs are followed by the indirect object. And the infinitive plus two. Verb is used to report orders include tell, order, and instruct. Here we have the teacher told me to read. The teacher told me to read. Told me, this is indirect object, me, then two, then the infinitive. The officer ordered the soldier to, uh, to fire. This is subject, order, this is the verb. The soldier is the uh, object and to fire. The, the coach instructed the player to pass a lot. Okay, verbs used to report orders. 
requests, like ask, invite, remind. She asked Sani to close the door. Omar asked me to help him. Ask someone to do something. Ask someone to do something. Ask Sami to close. Ask me to help, and so on. Verbs used to report positive advice include what? Advice and encourage. So her parents always encourages her to think. This is the verb encourage. Before encourage the uh, subject, after encourage, of course, the object. So Rami advised Ahmed not to go out as it was raining. So advise someone, advise another. So this is subject, advised, object. And here this is subject, encouraged, and object. Okay, we have also verbs used to uh, report negative advice. So advice and encourage is a positive advice, do something. Uh, warn is a negative advice with the meaning don't do it, don't do it. So she warned him not to smoke. When uh, would you warn people not to use uh, um, messaging? So this, she warned him not to smoke. So with the word when, uh, so with the word or the verb warned, we use not to, we don't use to, we, we use not to because this is negative meaning, don't do it. So don't do it will be not to do something. So this is what. Okay, let's go to the grammar section. This is here, the last part. Could have and should have. Okay, let's read together. Use it. Could have lost past participle. Uh, uh, uses of should have or ought to have plus past participle. So we have a structure called could have plus past participle. Another one should have or ought to have the same. Ought to is like should, the same. They are equal. So should have plus past participle. The same is ought to have plus past participle. Okay, let's read and explain the meaning. Could have lost past participle to say that something was possible in the past. So could have lost past participle refers to the past. He could have bought these eggs when he went out this morning. So he didn't buy them. He didn't buy the eggs, but he could have bought them. So he could have done something, but he didn't do it. Okay, so this is could have bought. Okay, to say that someone had the ability to do something by the uh, uh, didn't, but they didn't do. Okay, so this the same meaning. She could have bought a new mobile, but she didn't. So she could have done that, but she didn't. Of course, we talk about the past. Uses of couldn't have plus plus participle. The same to say something wasn't possible. This is negative here in the past. You couldn't have seen Dina today because she was in Germany at the moment. You couldn't have seen her. So something was possible in the past again. We talk about the past. So when you talk about the past, this is the structure of when we talk about something, it was impossible to happen in the future. To talk about past action, uh, uh, to talk, to say something was impossible in the past. We couldn't have seen Dina today because she was in Germany at the moment. Okay. Next, this is the uses of should have plus past participle or ought have or ought to have plus past participle, ought to have. Okay, to talk about a past action that was a better choice but didn't happen. So when you talk about something, better choice, better choice. So uh, it was better to do it. But of course, again, you didn't. You should have asked Magda for help with your homework. You should have asked Magda for help with your home, should have asked. So you should have asked Magda for help with your home, that means that it was better to ask her, but you didn't. Okay, second usage for should have past participle or ought to have past participle, talk about regrets, to regret about something. I should have worked harder at school last year. So I didn't work hard and I regret now. So I say I should have worked hard. 
I ought to have studied harder last year. The same meaning, should and ought to are the same. She should have, but her phone, she should have put her phone down. Uh, she should have put her phone down. Okay, she didn't put her phone down, but she should have done that, but she didn't. She could have given up smoking. Okay, what's the meaning here? She could have given, should have given. So what's the meaning here? She should have given up smoking. That means that it was better for her to stop smoking, but she didn't, unfortunately. Okay, should you have called your uh, grandparents yesterday? This is another uh, how to make a question for that. Okay, third usage for uh, should have a past participle or ought to have a past participle to make predictions. To make predictions, they should have arrived by now. Okay, so that means I think they are supposed to arrive. The same meaning they are supposed to. I'm not sure, but I'll just predict. I don't have an information, but I just predict that. Uses of shouldn't have, this is negative form, instead of should have of participle and ought to have of participle. So this is ought not to have and shouldn't have. A shouldn't have gone to sleep so late last night. So shouldn't have gone to sleep late last night. So she did that and she shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't have got upset. She shouldn't have made noise. Okay, the same meaning, the same idea. Okay. This is for the, uh, the OL. And let's share. something else related to the AL. Okay, here. Let's share something else. Can you share? Okay. Here we have your uh, grammar videos. Let's find them. Discuss a grammar topic okay, here. This is for, that's it. So, This is our lesson, last week's lesson. Let's complete it here. Present perfect versus continuous. Present perfect versus continuous. Let's share it here. Okay. This is the video. Okay, let's discuss it together. Important lesson seems to be easy many times, but it's not all the time. It's not as easy as we think. The present perfect versus present perfect continuous tense. Okay, let's watch here. The present perfect tense has many uses and is very common in English. <clears throat> of course, the present perfect is the most common tense in English, frequently used. <clears throat> Generally speaking, uh, uh, the, the present perfect is used to connect the past and the, the present. So the main usage of the present perfect is to connect the past and the present together. So something happened in the past and less than effect to the present. 
We often use this grammar for an action that started in the past, but it's still happening today. Sometimes still happening, sometimes still stop happening, but has its effect only. Here's an example. The present perfect tense. I have lived in San Diego for 10 years. I have lived in San Diego for 10 years, meaning I moved to San Diego 10 years ago and I still uh, live here today. So this the meaning here, have lived in San Diego for 10 years. I started living there uh, since, uh, uh, I started living there 10 years ago and I'm still living there till the moment. I moved the present perfect connects the past and the present. Okay, so this is number one. Another common use of the of the present perfect is to talk about recently finished actions, often with just. So another usage uh, um, to talk about recently finished actions. Susan has just moved the floor. Look at the picture here. So don't walk in on it. It's still wet, as if he wants to say it is still wet. So to talk about recently finished actions with the word just. So something finished, but short time ago, because the floor is still wet until now. Okay, another usage. This, this is the form, easy, has or have plus plus participle. It's not difficult. Okay. How to make it easy, of course, for senior two with regular and the irregular verbs, nothing to be explained about it. So the usage is the most important thing related to any tense you ever uh, 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 study or tackle. Okay, the present perfect continuous tense. <clears throat> the present perfect continuous is often very similar in meaning to a present perfect tense. Just like the present perfect, we can use this grammar to talk about something that started in the past, but it's still happening. So something started in the past, but it's still happening. So the present uh, perfect continuous is the longest sense on the timeline. <clears throat> something started in the past, still happening till now, and may continue to happen in the future. Okay, uh, so here. Yeah. 